Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top five reasons why your refrigerator is too cold. Stick around till the end of the video for an important tip that can help save you money. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the water supply underneath the sink. First we need to check the temperature sensor. It tells the control board the temperature inside the refrigerator. Temperature sensors are white plastic sensor bulbs. They tell the control board the temperature inside the refrigerator section so it can run the compressor as needed to maintain the desired temperature. Temperature sensors are often used in multiple places in the fridge, many times behind the back wall, inside an air duct, or behind an access panel. If the refrigerator is too cold, it could be that the temperature sensor has failed or it's reading out of its normal range and the control board thinks it's warmer than it really is, so it keeps the compressor running. In order to test the sensor, we'll need to remove it from the system. Most times you can just unplug it, so follow the wires back to the nearest connection point to see if it unplugs, otherwise you'll have to cut it out for testing. As long as you have access to the plug or the bare wires, you may just be able to leave it in the fridge for testing. Once you're ready to test it, you need to check the ambient air temperature. In our case, it's about 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The sensor will have a different ohms reading depending upon the temperature, so you'll have to look at your text sheet to see what it should read. Our sheet says about 5400 ohms at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So set your meter to ohms. Our meter automatically detects whatever ohms are coming in, but you may need to set your meter to read the proper ohm level. Touch the probes to the wiring harness pins or bare wires, whichever you have, and check the ohms reading. It should be close to the one specified in your text sheet. If it is, you can reinstall it, but if the reading's way off or you're not getting a reading at all, you'll have to replace it. If you need to order a part, simply go to appliancepartspros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Next, we'll look at the cold control. It's the control you set the refrigerator temperature with. Cold controls have been used for many years. They have a shaft for the knob to mount on, a sensor bulb that senses the temperature, and a body which has the contacts inside of it. Most also have two wire terminals. They're located in the control panel, mounted right behind the control knob. If your refrigerator is too cold, it could be that the cold control is bad. The contacts inside the cold control are open and closed by pressure created in the sensor bulb. As the refrigerator gets warmer and colder, the fluid in the sensor bulb expands and contracts. If you notice that the compressor is running too much and the refrigerator is too cold, it could be that the contacts inside are stuck. As a simple test, while the refrigerator is running, you can try knocking the area around the knob to see if this will break the contacts free. If it works and the compressor shuts off and the refrigerator warms up to the correct temperature, that's a good indication that the contacts are sticking together and the cold control needs to be replaced. If it didn't work, make sure to unplug the fridge again before you move on. In order to see if the part can carry an electric current, we have to test it with a multimeter set to continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. In order to test the cold control, you'll have to open the control section and remove the wires. Depending upon the design, you may have to remove the knob and screws to get to the wires. You want to make sure the cold control is in the off position. Then touch a probe to each terminal. It should not have continuity in the off position. Then turn the control on. It should have continuity when you have it in the on position. If the control fails the continuity test, it'll have to be replaced. The last part of the control to check is the sensor bulb. Over time, they can rub against something or just fail and start leaking. If you see any damage or indications of oily residue along the bulb, or where it mounts to the body of the control, then it'll have to be replaced. Now we can check the main control board. It sends power to the compressor. The main control board collects all the data from all the sensors and switches of the refrigerator and controls the various functions, including the compressor. They're usually mounted behind the control section in the refrigerator, the dispenser control, or on the back wall of the unit behind an access panel. If the refrigerator is too cold, it could be that a relay has failed and the compressor isn't shutting off, or it's not reading the temperature sensors. 
due to all the different designs out there, we can't show you how to test them all here. You'll have to get the tech sheet for your model and run the diagnostics. In this example, you'd have to use the compressor condenser fan test. Your sheet may call it something else, but if the board fails the test, it'll have to be replaced. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. Next thing to look at is the air damper. It controls how much cold air gets circulated in the refrigerator. There have been many different designs of air dampers used over the years, but they all do the same thing. They have a small motor and a door that opens and closes to control how much cold air is let in from the freezer. Air dampers are usually located in a divider wall between the freezer and fresh food sections. If the refrigerator is too cold, it could be that the damper has failed in the open position. Usually this means the motor or gear has failed, or the door linkage is broken, and the door isn't moving even if the motor is working. If you think air circulation is the problem, you should first check to make sure that the damper didn't get ice built up on it. Also, if you have them, check the lower vents to be sure they're not blocked or iced up. Once you have access to the damper, you'll have to inspect the air damper door for any damage. If it's damaged, you'll have to replace the whole assembly. If the door is fine, we'll have to test the motor for continuity. Most air dampers have a wiring harness that you'll have to unplug. Because there are so many different designs of damper motors, you'll have to check your wiring diagram to see which wires to test. Our example has two circuits, one for open and one for close, so we'll have to test them both. Once you determine which wires to test, touch the probes to the matching wire harness pins. It should have continuity, otherwise you'll have to change it out. On some of the newer models, you can use the tech sheet to test the damper. Yours might be different, but in this example, you'd use the damper operation test. If the damper fails the test, it'll need to be replaced. Last thing to check is the temperature control board. It monitors and controls the temperature of the refrigerator. Some models use a separate temperature control board to monitor and control the temperatures. They're a small control board and usually have the displays on them to show the temperature. If your model has one, it'll be on the dispenser or inside the refrigerator at the top behind the control panel, usually where the temperature display and controls are. It's unusual for the temperature control board to fail, but it is an electronic part subject to moisture, so it can go bad. The touch control could be going bad, or corrosion could cause an incorrect sensor reading. So if your refrigerator is too cold and you've checked everything else, make sure you test the board. Unfortunately, there are so many designs out there that we can't show you all the tests, so you'll have to use your tech sheet and run the test for your board if it fails the test, you'll have to replace it. Now here's that money saving tip we mentioned earlier. If your freezer compartment isn't getting as cold as it used to and your ice cream is getting soft, it could be that your condenser coils are dirty. Dirty coils can cause the freezer to run warmer than normal if the condenser and other components are covered in dust and pet hair. Dust and pet hair can insulate the coils, preventing them from working efficiently. This can also make the refrigerator run more and cause wear and tear to those components. Keeping the coils clean can improve your refrigerator's efficiency by 30%, so doing this can save you money on your electric bill and future repair costs. In order to clean them, you'll have to pull the refrigerator out and remove the rear access panel, then carefully clean the coils. Keep in mind that some may be accessed from the front. You may have to use a condenser cleaning brush to reach in there. Also, while you're back there, clean the compressor, condenser motor and fan blade, and wipe down everything else. Be sure you're careful not to damage anything, and make sure you do this at least once a year. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now. And if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.